So Emma, now, uh, so we talked about you know, various topics, uh, design systems, CSS, JavaScript, React, a lot of things. Uh, but you told me that you are interested in animations, right? Mm -hmm, I am. Uh, why, why is that? Like I animations, like, I mean, sometimes they feel like these kind of uh, fun things to use, but mm -hmm. not so useful. Yeah. Yeah, are they? I would say on the scale of like, necessary to nice to have it's leaning towards the nice to have but when you understand um maybe the psychology behind why they're so important to our products um they become a little bit more uh important so i think i've gotten past the point of needing to really learn my basic web development skills and so now i was i was kind of on the market for looking or I was looking for a new technology to learn. And animations is something that I've always wanted to learn. I think that started with, you know, following Sarah Drasner and seeing her SVG animations and all of those things. Um, but I never really had the time. And so recently I've been kind of learning more about micro interactions and how they can really enhance our products. So it's not just a, a pretty animation. They can have like real world implications for how users interact with our products. So um, for example, perceived performance is something that um, I think we should talk more about. I think it's it's very important. So I forget like the statistics, so I'm not even going to like make them up because there's no point. Um, but users are very impatient uh, and they don't like to wait very long for things to happen. But if you give them some sort of animation, the perceived performance is much, I think it's larger. Uh, they're willing to wait a little bit longer if you indicate that either something's going on or you're giving them something to distract them from the fact that things are taking a little longer than usual. So um, the psychology behind why we would incorporate animations in these ways is really interesting. Uh, so basically, you're, so you talked about the perceived performance, right? Mm -hmm. So for instance, I click on something and it's, it has some work to do and then you start doing some animations. Is it, you're talking about the loaders or the other kind of animations? Yeah, loaders could be one thing, progress bars to indicate like where in the process we are um, to achieving our goal. So like if I click like a submit button on a form and nothing happens for three seconds, I'm going to be like, what the heck just happened? Like, have you ever tried to like buy a flight and it's like 500 euro and you're like, did it work? Did it work? Like, is all my money gone or do I need to resend this form? Um, versus if you indicate like a prog if you have a progress bar or a loading indicator, it at least tells the me as the user that something is happening. Like they're right. processing my data and I should be patient. So. so do you have any other kind of kinds of animations that are not about the perceived performance, but about something else that illustrates something else that helps with other aspects of the product? Yeah, I mean, you can create really fun landing pages like parallax scrolling and animations in, in that way. Um, I haven't looked too much into those. I think I'm focused more on like how do we enhance. Experience. I'm still in like the learning stages, so right. I wouldn't claim to be an expert by any means. Um, but they can just add like small delight. They can add personality into your into your products. Like if you have a, a landing page with some really cool like WebGL graphics or, um, you know, some kind of like animated SVG something going on, um, mm. it adds personality to your products. Right. And I think, you know, with good um, visual designs and, and good visual interactions comes a level of trust that otherwise might not be there. We have a tendency, I think, to trust products that look nicer and mm -hmm. have a more um, customized experience. Right. And I, I fully agree. I mean, unless it's overused, right? And, mm -hmm. and then it gets like heavy. And, uh, right. The example of someone that's is messing with a scroll bar, you know, it, yeah. the oh. whole experience is, you know. I can't stand broken, that. Broken, right, yeah. yeah. But there are also some th uh, some animations that will guide you Absolutely. through what's happening into in the, in the interface. So, so it's like you, you're hitting a button and someone <clears throat> we're interviewing uh, uh, recently, they talked about this example when you, uh, you click a button and you, we want to draw your your focus to another place afterwards. Yeah. And you use animation for, for getting that yeah. kind of uh, focus, right? Absolutely. So now you're starting with animation. What what are you using? What do you use? Mm -hmm. um, I'm using React Spring at the moment because I finally get the first library that I've encountered that was really easy to learn. Um, so React Spring is a physics-based animation library, which it's not so much... Um, What's the word? Not timeline focused. I guess maybe timeline focused. I'm forgetting all my words right now. Um, it's not the same as a traditional like CSS animation. It's focused on physics and how things behave in the real world. So 
um, you can basically say like, I want this object to start from this state and end up in this state. Mm -hmm. And all the interpolation that happens in between um, is kind of left up to React Spring. Um, it's an incredible library. And uh, I was just taking Scott Tol Tolsinski. Tol I can't mm -hmm. say your last Scott. name, Scott. Yeah. I'm really sorry about that. Um, I I've taken his course for the second time within this month because it was so um, impactful for me. It's really a wonderful course. Um, and I would love to see more content come out in React Spring or just animations in general. Like, how can we use them effectively? Right. And, you know, there are a lot of things about, um, uh, well, animations be it in, in CSS or something else is like performance and mm -hmm. where the thing um, run and how they get optimized. What's your experience with uh, React Spring so far? I don't. I haven't seen any performance implications. I've also not used it yet in a fully fledged like enterprise product. Um, I've really only been doing side projects with it, so I haven't personally seen any implications. Um, and I know things like GreenSock Animation Library are maybe a little bit more robust. Um, but again, you have to really like add in animations and everything to see a negative performance implication, um, at least in my experience. So. I would use them intentionally. Don't just throw animations on everything. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't think that it should impact your performance negatively. Can you give us examples of uh, you know animations that you did recently? Maybe some simple um, examples. So something that I always struggled with to write um, from scratch was animating in a sidebar. Um, so like if you have a collapsible sidebar. Um, like I'm what? Can you what, what? An example of a collapsible sidebar. So, like if you have like a hamburger menu and you click it, and like your sidebar right. comes Opens. out from the side right. or from the top, um, with all of your navigation items in mm -hmm. it, you can do that with vanilla CSS just fine. Um, it's so much easier to use a library and say I want it to start, and and it works with React hooks, which is super nice. So if you mm -hmm. know if the user clicks the hamburger menu, set the state for the sidebar to on, and if the sidebar state is on, animate it from off the screen to to being on the screen. Um, so that's something that I was working with recently. Um, I can't remember any other. You put me on the spot. So like when you, I no, have but no, like, what no about, other examples. Like also, this this applies also to when you have like the sidebar as icons and then it opens with a full 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 menu and all yeah. these kind of things, right? Yeah. But is it like what what are the the kind of um, uh, when you want to to animate these kind of things? What are the the hard things about it? What are the the things that you would should be careful about when animating these kind of things? Mm, I know that there are some CSS properties that when animated have bigger performance issues. Um, mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly. They're, I always mix them up. Um, I think I think that animating height is less performant than animating uh, a fully sized um, component like their exposition to right. the screen. So like I wouldn't I wouldn't set the width to zero and then animate that out to like two hundred and fifty pixels. That's less performant, I think, than having a two hundred and fifty pixel width sidebar just off the screen and animating it, the right. translating that, it. Th this is totally right. I didn't know about it before. Yeah. But we had uh, uh, David we had it in, in a video and he talked about the fact that um, animating with and these kind of things, you need to kind of uh, recalculate every, I think all, it like everything around. Every, yeah. Yeah, and and that, that's huge. Yeah. Whereas animating position, and he talked about different different other properties that you can, right. capacity, mm -hmm. and there's some, and, and you know, it's transformation. Right. So use the, only these properties, he said, mm -hmm. because otherwise, you know, you will get into reanimating, like recalculating everything on right. uh, every frame or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. Mm. Uh, so now that you um, you work, uh, yeah, here, here's a question. Animations, are they part of design systems? They should be. If you're using them actively in your products and you have a design system, I think it's very common to have like a motion section of your style guide or your website um, to describe like what types of motion are we using um, because the type of motion that you use adds personality and you want to make sure that the personality of all of your interactions is the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, and how you, you, do you integrate into your design system? Is it like some kind of guidelines? Is it, is it directly in inside the components? How, how do you integrate it? I think it? they're built into the components, but um, just providing like written documentation on the style of animations that you're doing, um, maybe what transition functions, like if you're using like specific cubic Bezier like um, functions to, to translate your elements. Um, denoting that is really important so that you're not just doing like you know one second linear on everything like you if you have like a mm -hmm. like a cubic bezier function that you for your system have created that's important to to note 
Right. So, uh, but that's that's important to note because it's a ger- generally good practice. Or is it for that organization you need to specify your opinion on this? I think it's um, a design system is ever living, and you're going to have to build new components. And when you do build a new component, um, what types of things do we need to ensure that we add? Like if I'm building an accordion, mm. um, and if I'm adding an animation to that, which I should because it would just be pretty jarring if you just had an open and close flashing all the time. Um, what type of animation should that look like? What type of motion should that have? Right. Uh, okay. Thank you very much for uh, you know talking about uh, animations and all the other things. Yeah. Thanks.